Michael Hastings, one of the top reporters in the country, won the 2010 Polk Award for magazine reporting, finalist for the National Magazine Award. Uh, also in 2010, of course, had uh, the article Runaway General about Stanley McChrystal after that. Uh, when it was uh, found out that McChrystal has high disdain for his civilian command, he was asked to step down and he did step down. So his uh, reporting was important, it was truthful, and it was impactful. Well, uh, now we're finding out some new things about uh, what happened with Michael. Now, we yesterday told you about, uh, of course, how he passed away at 4.30 in the morning in L.A. in a single car uh, crash. Uh, it was a very fiery crash and the engine was thrown about some say 50 uh, feet, some say uh, far uh, bigger distance than that. Uh, interesting uh, tweet that just came out uh, a little before the show from WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks says Michael Hastings contacted WikiLeaks lawyer Jennifer Robinson just a few hours before he died, saying that the FBI was investigating him. Now, that's interesting, of course, on a couple of different fronts. Number one, I have no idea if that's true or not true. Uh, in terms of whether WikiLeaks is accurate about that or if Michael was accurate about that. Uh, I do know that uh, Michael was concerned about government surveillance. He said it on this show all the time. He also said it off air. And he had rights to be concerned. Of course, the government, it turns out, was surveilling reporters such as the Associated Press and, uh, of course, uh, James Rosen at uh, Fox News Channel and perhaps some CBS reporters as well. And then I went back and found the last article that uh, Michael had written uh, for BuzzFeed, and it says, Why Democrats Love to Spy on Americans. It makes a very good point about President Obama, as he has done on this show many times, talking about how President Obama had a, what he called a war on journalism. And uh, I realized towards the end of the article that he had talked about how the uh, Obama administration and its al allies, the FBI and Department of Justice, had viciously attacked reporters and anyone else that they viewed to be a threat. Uh, and you can interpret it for yourself, you can read it for yourself, and you should, it's a fascinating article. Uh, and he talks specifically about Jacob uh, Applebaum, he said he's a transparency activist and a computer savant, and that he's continually been harassed at the American border, and his laptop was seized. Barrett Brown, these are cases you can look into for yourself. Uh, Michael was a terrific reporter, and so on these I'm positive um, that these are the case, and, uh, and your interpretation of that could be different, but the fact is these people have been harassed. Barrett Brown was an investigative journalist who wrote for Vanity Fair from time to time, among other publications, Michael explains, and he was writing about uh, connections between private contracting firm H.B. Gary, and that's a firm that targeted Glenn Greenwald, we to told you about that uh, on this program. We only know about that because Anonymous, or a splinter group from Anonymous, Lulzsec, had hacked into their computer, it turns out three different private contractors, defense contractors, were uh, s scheming to work with the Chamber of Commerce to target certain people, including Glenn Greenwald, and this is another part of the attack on journalists. And uh, apparently, Br Barrett Brown is currently sitting in a Texas prison on trumped up FBI charges regarding uh, what Michael described as his legitimate reportorial inquiry into the polit political collective known sometimes as anonymous. So. Uh, the government does go after the people who reveal their secrets. The government also apparently goes after journalists who reveal their secrets. Michael Asing certainly went uh, and exposed some secrets the government did not want you to know. There's no question about that. Now, as far as the FBI investigation, again, I have no idea the veracity of that, but here's what I would ask, that the FBI respond. It's a very legitimate question. Were you investigating Michael Hastings? And if so, what were you investigating him for? And by the way, I wouldn't take the FBI's word for it. I th if they uh, come forward with a statement on it, I'm very curious to what it says. But I, however we double check on them, I would also like to double check on what they say. Now, whether any legitimate reporters will follow up on this is a good and open question, given that there aren't very many legitimate reporters left in the country. Michael Hastings was w one of the few. Now, likely, uh, most of the Washington press corps will treat this with disdain and say, oh, come on. Michael Hastings and reporting about people who were actually crushed by the government and he was worried about he was being investigated by the FBI. What, like, there hasn't been investigations? So why don't you do your job for a change? Michael's not here anymore, so some of you have to step up and actually act like reporters. I know that's foreign to you, but a simple question to the FBI might be a good place to start and then investigate further. Now, uh, you can tell that I'm a little disdainful of the 
mainstream press, uh, partly today because of how they have treated Michael Hastings, both when he was alive and now, unfortunately, when he has passed. Of course, when he broke that Stanley McChrystal story, there was a lot of people in the press who said, oh, well, how could he do this? It breaks etiquette. What etiquette? What, you're just supposed to be pleasant uh, to the people that you cover, the government officials, the generals, etc., at the expense of the truth? At the expense of the people that you're supposed to be serving, your readers, your consumers, your audience. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what the Washington Press Corps has turned into. Now, in his death, the New York Times, just to pour a little salt in those wounds in his obituary, mentions that he's an award-winning writer, uh, mentions that Stanley McChrystal did step down because of his article. I don't think he would have stepped down if what Michael had written was false. <laughs> he's not the kind of guy that would have gone quietly into the night. It was true. That's why President Obama asked for his resignation, and McChrystal gave it. But nonetheless, New York Times decided, oh, let's just throw this into the obituary anyway, just to do a little smearing of him after he's passed away. They say the Inspector General's report also questioned the accuracy of some aspects of the article, which was repeatedly defended by Mr. Hastings and Rolling Stone's editors. Oh, so the Pentagon, that did an investigation of itself, questioned the report which they despised, the article which they couldn't stand, which they were furious about. Now, did they say that it wasn't true? No, they didn't say that. But the New York Times throws this in here anyway, right? And in fact, he took action because it was true. McChrystal did step down. But the New York Times can't stand the fact that they're embarrassed by real reporters. Now remember this is the same New York Times that in the lead up to the Iraq war would take whatever the government said and put it on their front page. And they would say, yes, well, weapons of mass destruction. And can you believe that link between Al-Qaeda and Iraq? And they put up those nonsense Judy Miller stories on the front page. And if there was ever any stories that showed that perhaps Saddam Hussein does not have weapons of mass destruction, and perhaps you shouldn't allow President Bush and Cheney to, to use 9-11 in Iraq in the same sentence without pointing out the obvious fact that was obvious to us, but apparently not obvious to 70% of the American population when we went to war, which is that Iraq and 9-11 were not connected. You were a miserable failure during that time. Now, the New York Times has some good pieces and some good investigative reporters, but their editors take the good reporter reporting, put it on A27. They take the bad reporting that supports the government, that bows down to the government, and they put it on the front page. So since they're embarrassed about how bad they are as reporters, they take pot shots at people who can't defend themselves anymore because they have passed away. Congratulations, I hope you feel proud about that. All right, now if you thought that was bad, wait till you get a load of Geraldo Rivera. Now, Geraldo's a guy who I uh, have actually a perfectly good relationship with. I go on his radio show all the time. Shockingly enough, I think we've agreed every time I've been that, on that radio show, uh, even though we have at times different political views. So I've at times found him to be reasonable. This is not one of those times. I'm uh, outraged by the tweet he sent out, which again is totally gratuitous, but he did it anyway. Uh, reporter Michael Hastings killed uh, in tragic car wreck. Condolences to family. But hard to forget, he destroyed career of one of our best fighting generals. How dare you report what the general actually says? Remember, you're supposed to be like Geraldo and be a bitch to the government. To say, what, what, dear generals, I would love to have a drink with you. I'd love to be at a cocktail party with you. I, I, how can I serve you, dear generals? I'm here to service you. That's what Geraldo Rivera is saying, and he's not alone. That's what almost all of the Washington press corps does. That's why they were outraged by Michael Hastings actually doing journalism. I mean, look at this. He actually flat out admits it. How dare you do, how dare you report on what our generals are actually doing? Those are the people we're supposed to look up to and be PR flags for. I think Geraldo was a good reporter actually early in his career. Really early in his career. He hasn't done that kind of reporting in a long, long time. I don't know if he was jealous of Michael Hastings. I don't know if he was bitter that Michael Hastings had exposed the corrupt government officials that Geraldo Rivera apparently loves and associates himself with. But I do know that there was one person who hurt uh, our troops potentially. It certainly wasn't Michael Hastings. The only re so-called reporter that ever gave away the one thing that matters most, the position of our troops in the battle. Yep, you guessed it, that was Geraldo Rivera. Did it on a report on Fox News Channel.
And you're going to talk about endangering the troops and your best fighting generals? Spare me, Geraldo.